Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. I've got a little helper here tonight that's here with me, uh, ready with tonight's live. And so um, jump on, it's great to have you uh, joining tonight for tonight's devotional. Welcome everyone, I can see you there, Cass. Welcome, Dan Russell, I can see you jumping on. Welcome, 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 Timmy Campbell. See a few others that are jumping in and joining as well. Georgie's taking over. <gasps> Lauren Jones, welcome. Samantha Raw. Good to see you jumping in and joining us tonight. Ben Rugendyke. Ali, welcome. Welcome, Rachel Russell. Welcome, Ronnie Noble. Ainsley, joining as well. Welcome, everybody. Great to have you here. Amy said, I've got something in my teeth. <laughs> I don't know which tooth. <laughs> but it's uh, too bad. Welcome, Di. Good to have you on. Jumping in. Come on. Hannah, I can see you jumping in there as well. Ah, uh, awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm just going to share a quick thought tonight and uh, just encourage you just around the topic of joy. And so I've been thinking about this scripture out of Philippians chapter 4. And Philippians is an incredible um, passage in the Bible. In fact, it's written uh, from Paul, who was under house arrest when he wrote Philippians. And uh, it's an encouraging passage because when you look at Philippians and you look at the book that was written, Paul was under an incredible amount of pressure. And he was under a lot of pressure because of his faith, because he chose to follow Jesus. And because of that decision... And uh, the consequences of that, he found himself in house arrest and uh, was literally going to trial because of his faith and because of his preaching of the gospel. And so this guy that had encountered incredible and radical grace um, from Jesus Christ, and here he finds himself, because he's following Jesus, in a place where he's literally in prison because of his faith. And I think about that story and I think about the incredible amount of joy that comes out of this book of Philippians and uh, it's encouraging because even under in incredible amounts of pressure and stress, we can still make the decision as believers to have an attitude of joy. And so it says in Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Paul speaking, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Now, I remember a number of years ago now, when I was doing a short course at uh, my church in the Hunter Valley, and we were doing a short Bible college course, and we were doing it on prophecy this particular night, and we had a whole bunch of teaching on, on the topic, and then the second half of the class, we were going to prophesy over each other. And the beginning point of prophecy is encouragement, where you uh, give someone a word of encouragement, and then it crosses over as you begin to speak and begin to seek God to something that speaks to their future. It's a prophetic word, an encouragement that speaks into the future for that person, a, a spiritual insight to be able to see into the future and to be able to use that to be able to encourage someone. And so I remember this word that was um, spoken, and that, this word that was spoken over me was, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that the topic, I know that's a scripture out of Nehemiah as well, and they spoke this word over my life and said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're going to find yourself in life when you go through different seasons that you're going to be able to look at things and you're going to find joy if you look to Jesus and find him as your strength. And so that was an incredible word. And I, I left that moment kind of thinking about that and, um, and thinking about the whole idea that joy, I'm going to be a joyful person. I'm going to be a happy person. And that's really all I took away from the word. Well, the next few years were some of the most painful years of my life. And then when I look back at that scripture, I was reminded again that it wasn't just joy, but it was the joy of the Lord that really matters and the joy and the rejoicing in God. It's our relationship with him, not our circumstances. See, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is the result of happenings, whereas joy is the result of a decision that we make to put our trust in Jesus. And it's one of the fruits of the Spirit, that that just flows out of, out of our life as a natural result, that joy as we just have relationship with Jesus. And so I love that passage, and I love that Paul so clearly says that he always be full of joy in the Lord. 
Sometimes we're not joyful in our circumstances. Sometimes we're not joyful in our situations and the things that we're facing and they're, and they're painful and they're hard and they're difficult and uh, all of those things that can kind of add up in our life. But the choice to have joy is to have joy in the Lord, not in our circumstances. It says, I say it again, rejoice. Then he goes on to say this, let everyone, um, sorry, let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember that the Lord is coming soon. So in other words, that we would, if we're going to be people of joy as a response to that, our lives should be lived in such a way where we have this consideration for others, where we love to serve others and care for others. In fact, there's been a lot of studies done that people that serve others, that volunteer in areas to be able to be a blessing towards other people, whether that be soup kitchens or churches or any kind of area of serving and volunteering for other people, that actually improves the mental well-being of the people that are actually serving others. Is there any reason that Paul's speaking here about joy and then he encourages us to consider others, to think about others, even in the midst of our pain or our situations or our trials, that we would actually take some time to think about other people other than just ourselves. And I think that's an incredible truth that even uh, through the difficult and the, the challenging seasons that we would face, that we would actually look beyond ourselves and what we're facing and we would think about the whole concept that I could be a blessing to other people. In fact, I could be the most positive person in the room. When I, whenever I'm in a room, whenever I've got an opportunity to influence others, that I could actually use that to consider others, see how I could encourage them, elevate them and help them to, to become the best that they could be. And I think that that's a choice that we can make. And sometimes we don't feel like it, but I guess it's a reminder that joy is a choice. It's not the result of our circumstances. Then he goes on to say, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds everything anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I love that thought that not only are we called to consider others, but if we want to live with joy, we need to learn to be able to commit to prayer. Sometimes when worries, concerns, things that we're believing for crop up in our life, it's so easy to allow them just to take all of our focus and all of our attention. They can feel like weights weighing us down in this life. Things that um, can seem so big can keep us up at night. And these things that can sometimes just feel like they are heavy burdens that we take around with us each day. And it's, I'm reminded in this passage that we don't have to live like that. We can commit it to prayer. We can lay it down at God's feet, that God hears everything. He knows uh, our requests before we even ask them. He knows the details of our lives and he's not distracted with other things. He has given you and I all of his attention. And so God's focus and his eyes are on us. And so when we do go to speak to him, he's listening to everything that we say. Even when we're upset, when we're disappointed, even when we're expressing um, our frustration, God's big enough to handle that. And he loves that we actually communicate with him. I love the, the Psalms are full of instances of God's people just crying out to him and just telling him their heart and what's, what they're facing and what they're going through. And God's big enough to handle that. And so I want to encourage you to commit to prayer. Don't just hold the burdens yourself, but when there's things that you're believing for or challenges that you're facing, lay that down at the feet of Jesus. Commit it to prayer. And then it says this in verse 8, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure, lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting uh, into practice all you have learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. I love that promise. Then the, then the God of peace will be with you. See, we have the choice to control our thoughts. Not only are we called to consider others, and we're called to commit to prayer, but we are also called to look at our situations, the thoughts that come into our mind, and make the decision to control our thoughts. See, either you control your thoughts, or your thoughts will control you. We all have the choice, 
Uh, negative thoughts will come into our, our minds, thoughts of disappointment, uh, painful things will happen to us in this life that can cause us to lose focus and have our mind and attention uh, directed towards other things. But I love this quote from um, Charles Spurgeon. He said this, God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, when you don't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. And I love that truth that even when our thoughts can sometimes take us to negative places and we can find ourselves in, in an area where we're, we're just constantly bombarded by negative thoughts and things that maybe are wearing us down, we can make the choice to control our thoughts. We can make the choice to focus on the good. We can make our cho uh, the choice to focus on the honorable, the admirable, the pure, the lovely, as it says in Scripture, and redirect our thoughts to something that's going to bring positivity in our, into our life, faith into our life, that's going to help us to rise up and be the overcomers that God's called us to be. And I think joy is a choice that, that we need to make in our life. I know the NRL a few years ago, they used to have this uh, slogan just called love the game love the game was the slogan and I think about that for our lives we're going to have uh, good days we're going to have bad days we're going to go through highs and lows um, I'm not even just talking about COVID right now I'm just talking about in our general lives we are going to face challenges and obstacles those things are bound to happen but I want to encourage you just to continue to love the game just to continue to love God in the midst. Just continue to allow joy to come out of your life. Just make the decision, I'm going to love life. I know that there's going to be challenges. I know there's going to be good days and bad days. But I'm going to love the life that I've been given. I've been given this uh, time here on earth, which scripture describes as like a vapor. It's so short. I want to make the most out of it. I want to enjoy life and make sure that I'm not wasting this opportunity that I've been given. And so we all have the choice to live with joy. We all have the choice to, to make that a decision that we have and not just the result of our circumstances or our happenings, but we can make the choice to live with joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When we go to the source of joy, which is Jesus, then joy just naturally flows as a result. So I want to encourage you this week, consider others, commit to prayer and control your thoughts. And as you do that, and as you rejoice in the Lord, it's amazing how joy as a fruit of the Spirit will just flow out of your life as a natural result. Well, I hope that's encouraged you today. Let me pray for you and uh, then we'll close. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you've uh, called us to be people of joy. You want that to overflow out of our life. And I thank you for this truth that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I pray that we would be people that are strong because we are connected to the source of joy, and that is you. And I pray that people would notice that and that that would overflow out of our life in every way, in every situation, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Hope you're having a great night at home. And uh, it's been great seeing people's uh, uh, popping, popping up with comments and all those things and, uh, and just interacting in that way. But have an incredible night and we're looking forward to uh, seeing you with uh, Church Online on Sunday. So be blessed, have a good night and we'll catch up with you soon.